Welcome aboard, Cosmonauts. My name is Cosmic Oceans. I'm back with Dream Daddy. Um, still loving it. I feel like I just went on a date with him, but I still want to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and see Joseph again. And see what this turns into, because I'm kind of interested in his story arc now. It's been a long day of clipping coupons. Looks like there's a sale on box brownie mix. Hmm, that reminds me. I wonder what Joseph's up to. I should see if he wants to hang out. Or if he wants to go to the store with me and use these coupons. Looks like he's online. Hey Joseph, wanna hang? Takes a moment for Joseph to respond. Sam, hopefully you finally recovered from your brownie induced coma. And I know I promised you a fun hang, but tonight I'm actually chaperoning a youth group mixer. Amanda's invited, of course. If you're not doing anything, you should come. Oh, that sounds nice. No, it doesn't. And be a chaperone with me, because I need the help. Less nice. I think for a moment I'm a little bummed out, of course. I suppose I just wanted some me and Joseph time, maybe to get to know him a little better. Ah, oh, what the heck. My friend needs my help. <laughs> I type back. But if you need me, you got me. Just tell me where I need to be tonight. Joseph let me lets me know the details. It starts pretty soon. I should get ready. Okay. This is our second time chaperoning. I knock on Amanda's door and peek in. Hey man, I'm about to head out. Yeah. Where are you off to? Are you gonna go extreme couponing? Mm -hmm. I'm actually gonna go chaperone this youth mixer dance thing that's happening at Joseph's church. He says you're invited, but you don't. Uh, if you don't want to come, I'll cover for you. Hmm. You know what? I'm down. Maybe I can make some new friends. That's a good attitude, since her friends are shitty. Yeah. But I'll have you know I'm mostly doing this for the potential of free food. Thank you, Amanda. You get four daughter points today. Mm. Can I trade them in? For a daughter lava lamp? Sorry, you only have enough for a daughter spider ring or some of those daughter plastic jumpy frogs. I like those things. They try their hardest. It's so inspirational. Hmm. Jesus is coming. <laughs> what is happening here? We arrive at the church to find that nobody's there. Uh, there are decorations and balloons and banners and everything but no youths. Hmm, I've been to a couple dances in my life, and not that I want to paint myself as some sort of dance expert, but generally dances require people, and those people need to be dancing. All of a sudden, Joseph jogs up to us. He looks frazzled. You there, I need your help. Joseph gestures to the hand-painted banner hanging above the church that reads, Jesus is coming. Yikes. Hey. Well, that's certainly a thing. God made all things, Amanda. Except for the banner. Ernest made that. I I genuinely can't tell if he meant that maliciously or if he just can't spell good. Oh. You know what God also does? Forgives. He forgives teenagers and he never even breaks their box mods. Hmm. Are you gonna to break Ernest's box mod? <laughs> no, Amanda. That would be a sin. Oh. I think it's the one right after Sloth. Yeah. Sam, I need your help getting this down before anyone sees it. I can swing that, Amanda. Can you help? Mm. Physical labor, huh? Mm. Hmm. Mm. Amanda begins rapidly scanning the mostly empty room, looking for an escape route of her own way. I have to go set up the food. Mm. The food's already set up. Mm. I'm going to do a final inspection pass on the food to make sure it's up to code. Mm. I'm going to eat your food. Amanda's able to bolt away before myself or Joseph can get another word in. Ooh, she can really book it when she wants to. Her father was a <laughs> was a giant pair of legs. I dated some giant arms once, but it turns out they were all right. You must have been devastated. It was Armageddon. <laughs> no, it's I get it. I'll workshop it. There's a gem in there somewhere. Yes. I'm really glad you're here, Sam. Are you enjoying my company, or did you just lure me out here for my strong arms and height advantage? A little of both. It's always something with you, Joseph. Wink. <laughs> oh, wink. We just announce wink. <laughs> uh, something handsome and pious? You're not that pious. Mm. Debatable. You just allude to, <laughs> alluded to breaking a child's vape pen. Mm. I would have lost the debate. Huh? You ready to do this? Let's make some magic happen. Magic isn't real, Sam. God said that. God, it was also a bush one time. Mm. True. Joseph and I grab a stepladder and walk over to Ernest's banner. 
The charred Ernest had one final trick up his sleeve. Looks like this nightmare is stapled and taped six ways from Sunday. Any ideas? What happened to your strong arms and height advantage? Ah, right. I forgot about those. But I realized my oversized dad fingers are far too large to uh, get leverage on the tiny staples. You got a hammer I can use to pry these off? Sam, this is a church. We get a little nervous around hammers. And nails. Hey. I'm kidding. We just don't have a hammer. Oh, yeah. But we have to hurry. The use will be here any moment. And I'll never hear the end of it if we don't fix this. Wait, I have an idea. I wanted to grab the marker that Ernest used to draw this thing and jump back on the letter. We can't get it down, but we can send a different message. Let's do this right. I was able to turn the U into an A and an L somehow. It's a little tight, but it works. Well, that's true, I guess. Baskin is calming presence, Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, relax. Crisis averted. Let's just hope the youths don't notice. Joseph checks his watch. Hmm, the DJ should be here by now. Just then the doors swing open and a man struts in with his DJing equipment. Wait, you're not the usual guy. What happened to Evan? Evan knew exactly uh, when to play the Cupid Shuffle. Hey, hey, I'm not Evan. Evan sold all of his DJ equipment to backpack through Europe, so I'm filling in for him. I do envy him, though. Well, what would what I give to drop everything and start over? Haha. -ha. Wait, it's the sad guy from the trivia place. Are you alright? Alright, I'm better than alright. I'm DJ Spin Master Quinn. <laughs> he sighs heavily. I usually do trivia nights, but I moonlight on the ones and twos to give myself a sense of purpose in life. Is he okay? Oh. Well, you'll have to do. You have a playlist of fun songs that youths will like that won't inspire impure thoughts or tempt them to the dark side, right? The DJ thinks for a moment. Believe me, buddy, I got what you need. Hi. Okay, great, I'll let you get set up. The DJ leaves. <laughs> Let's just keep an eye on this one. He sounded like he was gonna play Creep by Radiohead on repeat. After some time, kids from the community start filling into the dance hall. Some of them seem to notice our sign hack, but they don't seem to care. Most of the kids group off into tiny clusters, standing in circles, casting sideways glances at the other groups of teens. Man, I, I do not miss being a teenager at social functions. Hey, hey, party people. Everyone in the room turns their attention to the DJ. Coming at you with sound that, that people want. We're off to a good start. The next tune goes out to all the ladies in the audience. Ladies, let me hear you say yeah. A few half-hearted yeah as I go through the crowd. All right. He sighs again. I um, I mean, it's been a heavy couple days. This one's actually just for my wife, Sandra. I hope we can work things out. My little honey suckle bud. Now, who wants to listen to Radiohead's Creep? The DJ begins playing Creep by Radiohead. Uh. Yeah. Amanda slides up to me, pizza in one hand and punch in the other. Creep, huh? Bold choice for a youth group. Let's see what goes, yeah, where he goes with this. After the song finishes, he plays Creep again. Is the DJ crying? If you watch the kids really closely, you can catch them cringe every time uh, Thom York, sw York swears. Ah. There they go. Maybe we should do something about this. Joseph runs up to us. He's killing the vibe. They're listening to swears. Sad swears. We have to do something. You guys should try to get him a pep top. Maybe work him up to everybody. Hurts by Rem. Or at the very least, No Rain by Blind Melon. You want to help us cheer him up? Uh, actually, I just saw my friend Fred. Frederick Frederico. Frederico? He's from Latin. I didn't know you were taking a Latin class. I'm not. He's from the country Latin? Oh. Yes, it exists. Don't Google it. You can go, Amanda. It's fine. Amanda. <laughs> and she's gone. <laughs> Joseph and I make our way to the DJ booth where Spin Master Quinn is having a quiet cry. Hey, bud. Hey, my dudes. How's the party jamming? It's, uh, not. Oh, I'm sorry, fellas. Uh, just taking a moment to find my groove. Gotta play the sad tunes to properly appreciate the bangers, right? 
that's not how DJing works. It's what Jesus would have wanted. Now stop me if I'm out of line here since I've never been a DJ and don't have any current plans to become one, but I don't think that's how it works. The kids come out here to have a good time. You gotta cool it on the sadness. Hey, buddy. If it's problems you're having with, Joseph leans in close to me. What was his wife's name again? Sandra. If you're having problems with Sandra, yeah. I can help you too. I do counseling. It's my job here and I'm very good at it. Oh, I don't know. Huh? I can tell that you're hurting. Nobody voluntarily listens to that much radio head on repeat unless they're really going through some tough times. Trust me, I know. <laughs> Joseph places a hand on Spin Master Quinn's shoulder who immediately collapses into Joseph's embrace, qui crying quietly. There, there, bud. It's gonna be okay. The thank you. I'll I'll put on some dance hall anthems. Huh? You're the best, Spin Master Quinn. With yet another crisis averted, Joseph and I return to the dance floor where Amanda's waiting with an ice cream cone. They have ice cream here. Good work, Amanda. How's it looking out there? Well, for a dance, there's not a whole lot of dancing. Looks like people are starting to bail, though. This is a disaster. Don't be so hard on yourself. The ice cream? Top notch. I'm sorry for dragging you into this, Sam. You and Amanda should just go home. I'm not gonna make you stay here for the train wreck. It's not a disaster. We can still fix this. We can... I suddenly realize what we have to do. Amanda, get out of here. I don't think you're gonna want to be here for this, or see, or be seen with me after this. Whoa. Oh God, you're not going to. I throw my car keys to Amanda. I'll get a ride back with Joseph. Just remember me as I am right now, not as what I'm about to become. Mm. Amanda nods. <gasps> nice knowing you, pops. She runs out the door. Oh. Joseph, I'm gonna turn it up on the dance floor. With luck, we can get these youths into it as well. Are you in or out? Joseph stares at me. He knows what has to be done as much as I do. See you on the other side. See you on the other side. Joseph and I walk onto the dance floor in the middle of the room. The youths all stare at us, unsure of what we're doing. Time to get our groove on. Let's start them off easy and work our way up to the more technical stuff. Let's start with the lawn mower. All right, let's rip start this baby. I start the lawn mowing the dance floor. Joseph seems to respond to that and decides to mow another patch of grass on the dance floor. That's the stuff. I look around. Well, it looks like we've got everyone's attention. Alright, Sam, let's turn up the heat. The shopping cart. The running man. The sprinkler. Let's do the sprinkler. I pull out the classic, hand behind the head, point your finger out. I point, <laughs> I point at it and make eye contact with several of the youths in the room. I think that makes them feel uncomfortable, but I push past it. Joseph understands. We must water the lawn. We just came off the end of an imaginary drought and the grass is dying. Don't worry, imaginary grass. We got you. I look around to the youths. They're getting into it. Nice work, but we better pick it up or they'll lose interest quick. Uh, hammer slide. I try to do the hammer slide. Honestly, it's not, it's not a bad bit, but the kids don't get into it much. Good effort, buddy, but I think that pan flashed a little too long ago. They're not looking too lively yet, but we can still turn around. Oh no! <laughs> That's too embarrassing. Twerking is still a thing kids do, right? Oh, this feels bad. This is really rough on my lower back. Oh no! Maybe twerking wasn't the best choice! <laughs> Alright, time for the big finish. <clears throat> Lift Joseph up dirty dancing style. I approach Joseph and motion that I'm about to lift him up. Are you strong enough to do that? I don't know. Without regard for human safety, I summon all my might and lift Joseph above my head. It isn't quite dirty dancing, but Joseph is a, is a good sport and spreads his arm while I spin him in a circle. <laughs> look at the crowd, they seem to love it. <laughs> I look around to see uh, if we've convinced any of the youths to come dance. No. Nothing, just a bunch of kids staring at us. Guess we didn't capture their hearts with the magic of dance. One of the kids yawns. Well, we gave it our best shot. We're gonna have to organize some sort of game so they don't start making out with each other. Thanks for coming, Sam, but I should take it from here. Boo.
That sucked. Hey, let's do that again Damn it. Yes, I had to take the long way home. I casually strolled through the neighborhood, taking in the sights and sounds of the suburban city. A little crime went outside tonight. Patrons are uh, game playing tonight. Drops of water at my head. Drops of water pouring rain. Maybe we should walk this. Eh. Didn't we do this already? Something about her seems different this time. Now that she's by herself, now she looks so sad. Does she know? Is it because of me? Am I a homewrecker? We're not even that close to him. I walk over to her booth. She doesn't look up. The seat taken? She still doesn't look up. I take a seat. She finally. Oh. You. Okay. This was maybe not the best idea. Uh, hey. Hey. Having fun with your new best friend, Joseph? Uh, he's a great. I'm so glad I'm happy for you too. Mary, I'm not hmm. I've never accused you of anything uncouth, Sam. You're just having an innocent, very platonic time with my husband, a supportive friendship. Come on. You're a good friend, aren't you? I'm I'm there when he needs me, Mary. Oh no, this is Uh Hmm. Fuck you, Mary. Unlike some other people in his life. So you're an expert on my marriage now. It doesn't take an expert to see that you two are miserable. What does that make you? We were miserable a long time before you started poking into our business, buddy boy. Don't come around thinking you're some paragon of empathy just because you get involved uh, where you weren't welcome. Mary takes a long sip of her drink. This was a mistake. You know, you're really not his type. I'm surprised. Ah. Mary pays her tab and strides uh, right out of Jim and Kim's without looking back. Welcome. You've got dads. Is everyone in this game just like assumed to be like gay or bisexual or whatever? Cause that's pretty rad. Um We're not getting on too well with Joseph, honestly. I don't know. He also scares me a little bit. <laughs> Okay. All right, we have Matt and Robert left. Is that it? Oh my god. We've almost gone through our second dates with everybody. Hopefully our date with Matt is better. Robert too. Hmm. Difficult. Okay. Thanks for coming on this journey with me, Cosmonauts, and I will see you in the next part. Bye.